Hey guys, Table here. Today I got a game in the uh, Hotnik for you. Tier 4 Russian cruiser, or not cruiser, well it's kind of a cruiser. Russian destroyer, technically. Uh, a lot of people are asking what are good ships for secondary missions, uh, citadel missions to close out this Massachusetts campaign. Secondaries, probably go with the uh, German battleships in general. They're going to have the best secondaries. Uh, the higher the tier, the more effective in general. Citadel missions, I think the tendency for newer players is often to think, well, battleships, you know, they're kind of designed to be hidden citadels. They can get some citadels, but in a typical battleship game, you're really going to typically get between zero and, you know, two or three citadels. You're not going to often get much higher than that. Lower tier cruisers and destroyers in some cases, that's the sweet spot. I typically go for tier four games if I need to get citadels, just because you got access to tier three cruisers and tier four cruisers. There's some lightly armored tier five cruisers, but as a tier four playing up into tier five, you're, you might have a little bit harder of a time hitting them, but you might get some opportunities as well. But lower tier cruisers, tier three, tier four, lightly armored, and usually they have raised up citadels. So if you can get in relatively close with these destroyers, Farragut and at Hotnik are kind of the two main ones in my mind uh, that are great for that. You can, you can get close and blast away at these guys. We'll see some Citadels in this game. It's not even, it's not like the record of Citadels I've ever had this thing by any means, but we'll just kind of demonstrate how we can get them here. Cruisers such as Omaha, um, Konigsberg, of course, is probably the king at Tier 4 for Tech Tree ships. Marblehead, if you got the Marbleheads. Uh, nice at hitting the uh, closer range citadels. Anything like that is usually uh, kind of the most efficient at getting these citadels here. I only needed like three or four in this particular game to close out the mission, but uh, we're going to get a few more than that anyways. Kuma moving in hot here, and you can see, looking on the map, you know, the Kuma was relatively broadside, the Phoenix behind him relatively broadside. Got to stay away from these ships, though. We don't want to be closing in on them. Uh, you know, the closer we can get them, yes... We can get this access to the citadels a little bit easier, but we're not trying to get suicidal. And that's always my recommendation for these missions, whether it's torpedo missions or capture the base missions or reset the base missions or whatever it is, secondaries even. You want to try and, you know, complete the missions. I get that, but don't start playing like a maniac. You know, you don't want to, number one, tank your win rate. You don't want to be screwing over your teammates playing like a maniac. Just kind of play normally, but just play ships that will favor what you're going for. Like right there, we got a five citadel <laughs> cell with the Kuma. Uh, anything named Kuma in this game, Chai Kuma, regular Kuma. Uh, those have massive citadels, uh, you know, and we've already closed out what we needed for. But anyway, keeping an eye on here now, in this particular game, typically the red side is going to overload here. They're actually only got four ships on this side, which is kind of interesting. Not uncommon to see six coming up this kind of northwest quadrant here. But you can see they got a couple ships in the middle as well that potentially could put pressure on us. I'm kind of responsible for spotting in this instance. I smoked in front of the Wyoming. He can't. It's not his responsibility to spot for me. It would be nice if he was. But I'm just kind of backing up here. We're trying to get some shots on the Kaiser, at least some torpedoes launched. Uh, that would be ideal. But we're also backing up trying to get an idea of where these cruisers are. If they're rushing me, that could be a problem. Luckily, they're continuing on. Uh, just kind of due north. Destroyer does pop up on the map there as well. You want to keep a note on that whenever possible. Even though we're not really in a position to deal with them, we still want to deal with these cruisers who, if they decide to push into us, can wipe us out very quickly. So still trying to do what we can do there. We got a torpedo on the Kaiser. Only hit him once. Did get him with a flood that you can see there in the, the damage counter on the north, or the <laughs> top right corner of the uh, screen there. We're still getting damage, so the flood stuck. Either he didn't use his damage con, or he previously used it um, to put out a fire or something like that, and now it's on cooldown. But note the Adahotnik. If you're going against this thing, even if you don't have it, you want to know how it plays, because this thing reloads very quickly. It's got four torpedo launchers here, and it's, let's keep it, it looks like about a 40, 45 second reload, something like that, on the torpedoes. So if you have an Adahotnik in the neighborhood, uh, you got to be keeping an eye on that torpedo threat. I actually checked the damage record on this ship after this game just because I thought it was a pretty decent damage game. I didn't expect to have the record, but I was just kind of curious to see what it was. The guy had 190k 
or 93k or something like that damage in the ship, which is extremely high, but it was like 16 or 17 torpedo hits, so the guy must have been suicide rushing battleship after battleship, and as long as they're not sinking you, you're going to sink a battleship that you get close range to, because with four salvos, you got to really kind of go out of your way to miss, or they got to have one heck of an evasive maneuver, but, uh, you know, usually you're going to put them on the bottom of the sea there. Clemson pops up here, trailed by the Kamikaze now. We want to get these shots off. We got to expect torpedoes coming from this gap, even though they didn't really likely know that I was over here. Um, I think there was a trailing cruiser you can see on the map there that they were probably targeting. Even if they knew we were there, though, they you know, would have been a nice play for them to torp that gap. So got to be careful. Block that guy's torps. He might be ticked off about it. Doesn't really ruin my day much. Clemson coming back around again. And I don't know if that's the uh, smartest, but oof, a little too focused on gunning him down. Almost got blown up ourselves there, slammed on the brakes just in the uh, nick of time. Clemson drop spot as we fire, but we do take him down there. And that's the second kill of the match. We already got high caliber and confederate, and we're only, you know, ten, five minutes into the game here. So it's pretty uh, brutal in terms of <laughs> what we've been doing in the enemy team so far. But in terms of ship count, tied up. In terms of score, they're actually up a little bit. Uh, they're going to keep pressure in our base, too. I think we might actually win this by capturing their base, but in order to do that, we're going to have to hold off the onslaught of the red ships, because they're definitely closer to the base. You can see they got two ships unspotted to the north that can come down here, pressure the base. Furutak is coming in. Uh, we are waiting for the smoke cooldown or the smoke cooldown uh, thing to reload or whatever. But in the meantime, more AP. Broadside cruisers, Furutaka. Furutaka is probably one of the more heavily armored cruisers at the tier, but any broadside cruiser tier 4, go ahead and blast away. Mutsuki coming around. I think this is the first time we've seen him. He might have been the one uh, swimming around in the middle of the lake there for a little while. Now that we got the smoke up here, we're going to go ahead and pop that. Note we got the guy to the east of us spotting. Now, Ideally, we would like to swing around, check his health before we commit to putting down the smoke here, because basically we plot it, we plop the smoke down with the intention of gunning these guys down that are closing in. If we lose our spotter to the east, and it is a cruiser, so he can go down relatively quickly here. Uh, if that happens, then the smoke's kind of wasted. Like we saw earlier in the match, we'd have to abandon the smoke and resume spotting for ourselves. That would have been two smokes wasted. That's a lot of offensive potential. So, luckily, our cruiser's doing a pretty good job uh, staying alive here. Phoenix, looking on the map, you know, that's about a 45-degree angle, maybe even a little bit steeper. We're still able to kind of punch through that thing. Now, the Phoenix, any Tier 3 cruiser, really, uh, the armor is suspect at best. Probably made out of paper, maybe bamboo and some more, some of the more heavily armored cases of uh, <laughs> Tier 3 cruisers. But in general, they're not going to be able to withstand some... Heat like that so go ahead and take the shots i don't think i have any uh penetration angle enhancement on this build i don't believe so uh mutsuki coming back around though and we tried to blind him to fire him in the torp or the cloud i didn't think we'd necessarily have enough length on those torps to get in there but might have scared him out of there once he saw him beeping on the screen but he flushed himself out and now we're just gonna bomb on him want to keep moving here we want don't want to completely stop just in case Torpedoes are coming in, but we're keeping an eye on it. He's probably, I don't know, it looks like he he might be more concerned with the cruiser. I don't know. I mean, the cruiser's the bigger threat to him, but on hot Nick, a lot of firepower coming out of this thing. No problem taking him down there. Kamikaze's falling up here. He's turning away, trying to disengage, but we're going to open fire with him. And, you know, we got a lot of guns on this thing. <laughs> yeah, hot Nick, a lot of guns, a lot of torpedoes. It's kind of a goofball ship, but it's like really good and it's a lot of fun to play so you know this is one of my more fun uh tier fours and one of my more enjoyable premiums in general if you're kind of getting ticked off at the world or your teammates or whatever hop into the out of hot neck you're gonna have a good time 123k damage here and that's probably gonna do it the guy sailing off to the north is gonna run we're gonna go ahead and capture the base but you know we only got 10 citadels but for this particular set of missions where we needed 21 that would have been half you know the a lot of citadels that we really needed so this is a good option like i said farragut omaha konigsberg anything with a quick reload 
I think the tier four Italians got pretty good uh, AP threats as well. That's another good option. I don't know. That might be a little bit longer on the reload, but I remember racking up a lot of Citadels. Can't remember the name of that ship right off the top of my head, but those are always good options. Yeah, the temptation to use battleships is always there, and you can get them to work, but usually they're not quite as effective. So anyway, I think we'll cut it there and uh, leave it at that. But hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. We've got lots of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. Love to hear from you guys, and see y'all later. Peace.